let's talk about aquatic isopods. I've uh, shown it briefly in a few videos, but basically the whole point of phase one of the isopod breeding project was to establish kind of what kind of environment they like. Uh, is there something they're going to breed in better than, you know, something else? So it was take our whole amount we started with and introduce them to different kinds of environments. So we're going to put put them in all kinds of different setup aquariums. We're going to put them in some big uh, tub systems. We even put them in uh, quite a few different jars. And, you know, the goal is to take what we've learned from that and then for phase two, which is starting now, set up a whole bunch of tanks and tubs and whatnot based off of what we learned. So right off the bat, the big key things are uh, they seem to really like hard water. They also really like eating algae. Leaf litter is very important. I, my whole goal is to establish them in the hobby, mass breed them, mass distribute them, get them out in more hobbyist hands. That's the whole goal behind all of this is to get more of them out there. So, you know, it's there's a bigger supply to meet the demand. Having the availability and the accessibility be much higher with these aquatic isopods. If more and more people are working with them, we're going to hear more success stories of how, you know, how did you keep them? How did they breed for you? Um, also, we get further and further away from wild, you know, specimens. They're going to be uh, possibly better adapted for these captive environments. So part of phase one in the breeding project was to figure out what they like. Um, I had several different uh, setups that they bred very well, and now I'm in the process of setting up a bunch of tanks and barrels and more more environments, but kind of along the lines of, you know, hard water, botanicals, uh, getting the algae in there. So let's dive into the care of these aquatic isopods. They're pretty tolerant of a wide range of parameters. So temperature, probably not going to need a heater, you know, anywhere in the high 50s to High 70s is probably great. Just like shrimp, as you increase that temperature, you're gonna shorten their lifespan. Tank setup, no reason to make it complicated, but kind of a rubble style tank is gonna lend nicely to the isopods. They like rocks, kind of chunky gravel works great. Some, you know, big rock piles uh, works awesome. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them with other fish, especially if you're just trying to breed them up or get a population going. But if you're gonna have fish in there, maybe some micro fish, uh, they would do fine with. You're going to want to have plenty of hiding places, plenty of uh, rocks or little boulder piles. With the calcium carbonate or the, um, the like aragonite sand or crushed coral, you're going to want to do something like a pound or two for every 10 gallons. And I say a pound or two because everyone's water is very different, so you're going to have to experiment with it. Where I've had pretty good luck with them breeding, that water always tests um, with a you know decently high KH of around nine or so and the GH, you know, 15 to even 20. So these are pretty high numbers uh, for GH and KH compared to what uh, most people maybe are used to. And you can achieve that just using that crushed coral or coral rock. So you've got your rocks and chunky gravel. Uh, you're gonna definitely want some kind of botanicals. Uh, the live oak leaves uh, work pretty well, but you're, you're, I think you're gonna really wanna mix. A thing like maple, um, there's the different oaks, there's cottonwood, poplar, there's quite a few that work and especially hard woods work pretty well. You could also use, you know, your typical stuff you can find online like the jackfruit leaves, Indian almond leaves, southern magnolia, again like the live oak, willow oak, red oak. Seed pods work out great. There's all kinds of different seed pods you can get. I also have the sweet gum seed pods, uh, the scud balls. A little side note here, this is important. Uh, right now we are working very hard on coming out with a whole lot of new cultures. So we're going to be bringing things like Daphnia, Moina, uh, green water. We're also going to be doing uh, several different cultures like uh, leaf cultures and seed pod cultures that are scud free. So you will still get some things with them like um, seed shrimp or copepods, but you're not going to have scuds in there. And that's, you know, there are people who don't want scuds in their aquarium. I understand that and I respect that. And there's a, definitely a, a demand there. So those kind of uh, scud-free cultures should be coming out in the next month or so, uh, as well as some of these other feeder creatures are going to be coming out very soon as well. So you're definitely going to want some botanicals, like some leaf litter, some wood works great. When, when you do research on these aquatic isopods, just like their land family, 
uh, they are, they're going to like that cellulose. They're going to like that wood material, the leaf litter. And in their natural environment, at different times of the year, they're feeding exclusively on the leaf litter. They also love algae. Uh, if you do have some good algae growth on your glass, I would maybe just scrape one side of it that you want to look at them through and leave the other ones unscraped. There's tons of beneficial uh, organisms in that algae that they'll feed on. Similar to scuds, you know, they're going to be shredders. They're just kind of shredding up the organic dead decaying material. They will um, chew on dead snail or dead fish. Uh, they will consume a little bit of that, but definitely uh, have seen them chewing on like dec decaying plant matter, the leaf litter, algae for sure. You want to put something like a little banana in there, they'll chew on that. Banana, cucumber, uh, maybe even some carrot. So food, shelter, we talked a little bit about temperature. I'm thinking that they would prefer maybe a little bit cooler uh, rather than on the hot side. I'm a big fan of uh, using some kind of like uh, air stone. If for nothing else, like not, you know, if, if you just don't even want a sponge filter, uh, sponge filters are great for uh, surface area for bacteria. But um, I just like it mainly for water circulation. Water movement uh, gets that gas exchange. I just, I think you can't go wrong with having a little airline in there with the air stone or no air stone or a sponge filter. Anyway, having a little air movement, I wouldn't, you know, they're not going to need a, any kind of rushing current, but just something to mix up the water a little bit in case you have a little overfeeding or you've got some plant decay or something's happening. You can off gas uh, or help some of that chemical processes uh, so you don't get like dead zones in the bottom of uh, bacteria layers building up that can, you know, wipe out some of these bottom dwelling creatures like your isopods. All right, so let's be wrapping this up. Big takeaways for the isopods. They're pretty hardy overall. I wouldn't keep them with fish unless the fish are really small. I put a bunch in with some uh, sword tails and guppies and they had plenty of hiding places, but I think over time they just did not do well in that environment. Now, to be honest, I know that tank is not nearly as hard water uh, as the other ones we were having better success in, but I did notice several times where I just, you know, would catch the fish you know, the ice pod would go scurrying out and the fish would just be picking at it and it would kind of curl up and try to be defensive, but that fish would just kind of mess with it and it could not get away very fast. Like you'll see a shrimp dart real quick or a, even a scud zoom away real quick. The isopod just doesn't seem to be able to uh, get away quick enough. Um, so I think if your habitat was complex enough to really be able to house them um, and your water was hard enough, I think maybe with with certain fish would be okay as far as food goes uh definitely have some leaf litter in there for them to chew on algae of some sort would be great uh, even if it was being grown in a different tank or something and you supplemented it put it in there wouldn't hurt to even do a little green water every now and again uh, the babies and all kinds of other little microorganisms are going to benefit from green water some fruits and veggie scraps every now and again again this is not something you're going to want to feed all the time it's not about feeding them regularly as long as they have food they can eat you know they're going to eat those natural foods if you put a slice of cucumber in and they're on it let them eat on it a little while then pull that thing out like don't you know if they're actively eating on it leave it in there but when there's only you know when they're done with it after you know half a day or a day pull that thing out uh, just to recap on the water hardness you want that um, ph to be up uh, now again ph can be a little tricky but it wouldn't hurt to be seven and a half to eight. Um, I have got quite a few right at eight. Your uh, mo most importantly, I would recommend getting a liquid GHKH test kit. That's what I'm always using. I do not trust test strips for GH and KH. As far as you know, you you see this vague color that's in this strange range, and it just seems like you know when I'm using the liquid test kits, I'm getting a pretty straightforward reliable answer consistent answer and it's definitely not matching what the test strips are saying so i would just go and spend the time to do those kh and gh tests using uh the aragonite that aragonite sand that you would buy at a pet store or a fish store they use it for uh saltwater uh, substrates or people use them in african cichlid tanks but you're going to want to take 
one to two pounds of that crushed coral or that aragonite sand, use it uh, in your tank in the top of the substrate. If I'm making a breeder setup, I just use like a little netted pot, like a little basket or something so I can move it around. Um, but it's not your whole substrate layer. It's just going to be like one to two pounds per 10 gallons. So you can kind of mix it in in that top layer. You could do a dirted tank, an inch of soil in the bottom, inch or less, two inches of sand, then put some gravel on top just for that surface area. And those little tiny baby isopods are so tiny, they love crawling around in gravel. There's going to be debris and things that fall into there. It's going to be safe from uh, other large predators that would eat on them. So if you go to my website, phillipsfishworks.com, I've got 10 packs available right now. Now you get two free with that, so it's 10 plus two, so it's a 12 total. I also, on the website, have the hardy cherry shrimp back in stock. So if you're interested in the isopods, check them out. Uh, hopefully they'll still be in stock. Check out the website, phillipsfishworks.com. There you can get other light feeders, like white worms, micro worms. Uh, love you all. Thanks so much for all the support. I've been blown away. We've had some crazy sales this week, and I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, also, we've got quite a bit of uh, other uh, things in the works, so uh, stay tuned. More information coming out. Thanks, guys. Bye. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up.